Sorry, I didn't move swipe on my life. You say you're ready in one. You're watching NTV GXP. A very good morning to you too. Hope you're enjoying this chilly, chilly morning. And uh, you're warm. If your legs are burning, you know, you went out for a run this morning uh, and you hadn't been, you know, training for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I passed a couple of people, uh, you know, on, on my way to work this morning. And, and, and they were, they looked like they were in pain and like they hadn't, you know, practiced for the marathon. But, you know, congratulations to those who finished and those who didn't. Yeah, you know, <laughs> good, good, uh, maybe good, good luck next year. But on the show today, we're talking about something absolutely interesting. And I have um, two very amazing guests. We're talking about Christianity and our African traditional beliefs. Is there a place for them to mix? Is there a place for them, you know, to mingle? Um, or, you know, is it that when you become a Christian, you should entirely throw out this. Now, we put, we put something up on our Facebook page. And um, here are a couple of, of, of your comments. Um, Prince Gilbert says the two never agree. Where there is Christianity, traditionalism cannot exist. Compromise is quite abstract in that area. And um, uh, Timothy says, culture beliefs my foot. We should... We should not compromise really when anything is against Christianity. It isn't okay. And Walakia like said, yes, to some extent, because even in Jesus' time, there were some cultures that were performed and a lot of other messages that I'll be getting into later. But on, on, on the show, I have um, Reverend Nyanzi uh, from Redeemed of, uh, Redeemed of the Lord Evangelistic Church. And I also have uh, Bishop uh, yeah, Laban, from Southern Taban, Taban yeah, yeah, Taban from Southern Sudan. I beg your pardon. And uh, we're just going to be talking about Christianity and culture. So uh, just before we get into that, I'd like you know to uh, starting with with with, with Rev, uh, Bishop Taban. Tell me a bit about yourself. You know what do you do? Um, well, uh, I am the bishop of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. It's an indigenous church, uh, born during the war in Southern Sudan from 1990. Uh, we believe that we need to do something, plant churches, and of course we have to give ourselves an identity. And then we adapted the name Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Okay. Uh, we are not the universal Presbyterian denomination, but we are an indigenous African church, just like those Bible churches, Pentecostal independent churches. Yeah. What, what do you mean by indigenous? Yeah, uh, what do you mean by indigenous African church? Well, I mean there are churches that are founded by missionaries yes that either comes from uk or from us or from europe in general they come and they preach and they teach and they and coach they the people church. and they plant the church yeah but of course uh, when i talk about indigenous church is a church that has been founded by an african um, local person in that locality you know yeah. and it started growing up yeah if there had been western partners that has come in they came in because something is going on there. Yeah. But it is not operating there because they have put it to be there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really good to have you on the show. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Nyanzi, tell us a bit about yourself, please. Uh, my name is um, Reverend Hedson Minsera Nyanzi. I come from Akerele Redeemed of the Lord Evangelist Church. I'm a pastor and at the same time I'm a teacher. I'm the Director General of Makerere Day and Evening School for Adults. Makerere Redeemed the Church started in 1979, and <coughs> uh, we're emphasizing on evangelism. Okay. So on, 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 on the show today, um, I mean, we just talk about Christianity and culture, and um, a lot of people here on our Facebook page are saying um, Christianity and culture cannot mix. Um, you know, where there's Christianity, you can't have um, any of your traditional you know, beliefs going with it. And, I, and I'd like to start with with you, who's, who has a church that is indignant and planned by the people that are there. Just like ask, is, is, are there, th like, like traditionalism, does traditionalism have a place in the church? Is, is there, a, a, does it have a place or is it just something that, you know, we should, we should totally ignore? Well, I think uh, traditionalism has a place in the church. Because I believe in the first place, God is the author of tradition. Right from day one of creation, um, God has given us a certain lifestyle of living as a human beings. Mm. And over years, we build a way of doing it. And that's what we call tradition. Mm. And if we exist as a human beings and we have a way of doing things, and we have been doing it from one generation to another, 
why can't we accept and say that's what we are? Yeah. For me, I believe strongly. I don't want to the element of people saying, you know, uh, is a compromise. It's not a compromise. But I believe that our traditions are good as long as we accept the fact that Christ has come to redeem our traditions from that evil element in it. To eliminate the, 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 the sinful element of our traditions, but not to totally do away with our traditions. Okay. Yeah. Because even in the church we have a tradition. Yeah. Today you, you talk of the Anglican church, you talk of the, the Catholic church. Yeah. These traditions are started in Rome or somewhere else yeah. that have been carried forward to us in Africa here. Yeah. Yeah. The way these people, these guys do things is not uh, just exactly as it was written in the Bible. Mm. But it was how they believed the Bible and they started doing it in the way they used to do. In their culture or in their tradition. And we have carried it forward today into Africa. So some of our churches are reflecting some people's traditions and mm. cultures. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Nyazi. Yes. Um, what, what's, what's, what's your take on, on, on Christianity and tradition? You know, is there? I concur with uh, the bishop that uh, we cannot allow a culture totally from the church because not everything in the culture is bad. There are some good items which you can find in the culture. For example, respecting the elders, uh, to respect the morals within the society about marriage. Some of these were here before becoming a Christian. Mm. However, there are some items within culture which may not be good which may be diverting people from God. Uh, for example, worshipping the spirits, worshipping idols, those can be thrown out of the culture. However, the others can be maintained because culture is helping us to get identity where I belong and to respect you, to understand you because of the culture. And a person without culture is, a pers is just a person without a backbone. Because the culture is the backbone. I can say I'm in Uganda because of the culture where I come from. And all my behavior being molded from that culture. So Christianity made me somewhere. And I cannot say that culture is wrong when it has brought me where, where I am. So what you have to do is to pull out what is bad and maintain what is good. So the question I'd like to ask right now, because a lot of Christians you know, mm. would ask, so okay, yes. I keep culture and then what? Is, mm. is, does, does culture have an importance in helping us be better Christians? As opposed, Is there something about culture that we need to understand? And does, does it make us better Christians in any way? Or is it just one of those things that, you know, we're trying to keep because we're trying to keep? You know, does it make us better Christians in any way? Well, I meant to say, um, a culture, of course, is a, a way of doing something okay. that already we had been used to and then of course christianity as 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 my dear brother reverend has already said christianity or the lord jesus came in to redeem us from that evil part of our culture but it doesn't mean that all our cultures are, are wrong some elements of our cultures are wrong i agree with him like the worship of the spirit of the ancestors or worship of something worship of an animal or worship of a mountain or a river of course, that is not, that's ungodly. Okay. Yeah. But I mean to say, we need to have a culture. You know, sometimes in my, in my local language, you know, I, I, I come from the, the, the Kakwa culture. You know, the people sometimes in the Kakwa, they say, you know, you are very uncultured. Mm -hmm. You know, behavior, your behavior is very uncultured. Mm -hmm. Which means you have, you, you, there's no background where you are coming from. And I agree with him. Today I can tell this guy is a, is a Muganda, is a Musoga. Mm -hmm. It's because of the way how he does things. Yeah. And that's not evil. It is until when we begin to do the evil thing, mm -hmm. and that is the thing we need to re remove out of our culture. So I mean to say, Christ didn't come to do away with the cultures, mm -hmm. but to redeem our cultures, to transform our cultures to what God intended them to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what I, I, my, 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 my question is, mm -hmm. Christianity is a culture, right? Yes. Uh, to, uh, and how does Christianity then, it be a culture, merge with my regular Birth, birthright culture because then th that 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 is the point where it con contradicts itself i don't really say christianity is just a culture it is not. christianity is a faith it is a belief mm. if i quote john 3 16 it says whoever believe mm. whoever believe whoever believe which means whoever it means from all the background yeah. you're coming from uh from a, a muganda culture background mm. from a kakua culture mm. background whoever believes that Jesus is the son of God. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So I mean to say, it's not a, it's not just a culture whereby there is a system created. It. That's why you find we are different, mm. different churches, different yes. denominations. But we, we have different styles of doing things. Mm -hmm. Then if Christian is their culture, mm -hmm. then we should all look uniform. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any difference between the Catholics and the Anglican. They should look one. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any difference between the Catholics and the Pentecostals. They should look mm -hmm. one if it is a culture. Mm -hmm. The fact that it is a faith is not mm -hmm. a culture. That's, that's culture. why you find people have different way of doing it according to their culture. Mm -hmm. What is important is that the, the evil element of your culture is taken off of as you become a Christian, as you believe in Jesus. Okay, because then, then the, 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 the correlation seems to miss a, a point there because um, as a person, you have to have your regular beliefs as, as, as I am Uchiga, I have to, there's a certain way I was grown mm, up. When you give birth and to twins, something you know, has to happen. Uh, there's, there's, and then when I become a Christian, I have to shade off all of that to be a Christian, and then I have there's there's there seems like there's no way I can still be a Christian and be a Machiga Adam at the same time. No, I don't. Think I so. think uh, that is not right. I, I so. remain as a Muganda. Yeah. I, I, I'm a Christian. Has has mm. and 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 because because at the end of the day, I want to know mm. does culture improve? Ha, does it help? Because because it, it it makes no sense in me keeping my culture if it's mm. not going to add to my Christianity mm. in any way. So that's what, that's what I'm asking. Does, does, does culture improve your Christianity yes. somehow? Yes, it, like it, it, does. it does. Yeah. It does. It does so much. Mm. That's what I'd like to hear yes. about. It yeah. does. Because as my brother mm. said, I love the Muganda culture. Mm. I love the kind of respect that is being given. Mm -hmm. And because of this, I believe that someone who maintained that culture in Christ, it even gives more value into yeah. my belief in yeah, Christ. That's true. Yeah. So, so I think culture adds value to that's Christianity. True. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd like to talk about the name change because I know, I mean, mm -hmm. you're from Pentecostal Church. Yes. This happens mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I enter the church being called uh, Namkasa, mm -hmm. you know, I get saved, then I change my name to something else. Yes. Uh, because, you know, I don't believe that, you know, my name is, is spiritual enough or what do you have to say about that? Okay, some names, they are not good in their Christian faith. Mm because they are connected to our traditional gods. For example, if you are called the Semusambwa, you are called the Dungu, you are called the Mukasa, those are gods in Buganda. So you cannot be have a Christian name at the same time with this one. It is almost what we call syncretism in our theology. You mix the two gods together. Hmm. Because there are some names like uh, clan names. Hmm. For example, you call them Inyans, means I belong to Mbogo clan. Hmm. But there are some names which are connected to traditional gods. And you cannot have the same name, Christian name, mm -hmm. and the other name. However, if somebody was found with the same name before, he is free to continue with it or to change it according to his conviction. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus Christ comes, he washes everything and becomes a new. Mm -hmm. So we can remain with the, na the same name because we may find some people all their documents and the same whatever the same name now is uh, is a christian at 50 years and they cannot change those names it is just to pray to, Je to, to god that you can change everything uh, i mean, I mean shouldn't, 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 shouldn't it be that okay yes i have i have i mean i have my traditional name and, and whatever it is whatever it's connected mm. to i mean it's it's god is you know faithful enough to come and cleanse me he's not going to cleanse me he's not going to refuse to cleanse me based on my name mm -hmm. yeah so so why do i have to why do i have why do i have to change my name anyway your conscience is uh is the best teacher sometimes you feel convicted that the way you are named initiated in that culture because one may have been given a name without being initiated but some people they go through a lot of cultural rituals and it's being given that name or that name, they got it from somewhere, from what demonic whatever, say, that is my child. That kind of name, sometimes even it becomes a question, is it convicted that I have to change my name? But there are some people whereby they say, ah, oh, you are called Mukasa, without rituals. But as I said, your conscience is the best teacher. If you are being convicted, that you, feel you don't feel comfortable, you are free to change it. But when you are Christians, I believe Jesus Christ can change everything, become new. Okay, you can feel free to get in touch with us on our Facebook page, on our uh, Twitter page. Our Facebook page is ntvgxp at Twitter is ntv underscore gxp. Um, we're talking about Christianity and culture. Do they mix? Uh, feel free to send us a couple more messages on Facebook. A couple more people saying, I don't think so. As Christian, we follow 
the Jesus culture. Uh, that's on Facebook. My say, if the practice doesn't contradict the Bible, then yes. But if otherwise, then absolutely no. And Nicholas says, it's fine as long as they don't compromise with God's standards if they uh, don't practice them. Um, and uh, Momus is coming through uh, here. Uh, Javan, you said, at some extent, cultural beliefs bring up discipline as the threat um, that an aunt can curse you when you annoy her. Though some beliefs are contrary uh, and against the word of God. Of course, you can feel free to keep you know, sending your messages in. You'll be able to call us a bit later on. And uh, we'll still be with um, you know, Reverend Nyanzi and uh, Bishop uh, Taban on the show. And we'll play some more music and we'll be back in just a bit after this. Good morning. About you know, culture and tradition and Christianity, is there anything anything uh about about our culture that you know can be incorporated into christianity or is it just one of those things that we need to throw out and and get a read of and you know i mean do they mix in any way and you know during the break i was uh, talking to 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 the bishop and the reverend about things like last funeral rites yeah i don't understand them because i mean a, a lot of us especially my generation we have absolutely no idea I beg your pardon. We have absolutely no idea um, what is behind a lot of this, a lot of these these traditions. I mean, you give birth to twins, and then your your aunties are insisting they should take them, you know, and uh, we we don't know what's happening. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about last funeral rites. I mean, I I I know I know, I know people who have been lost, you know, lost their dad, and they have to do last funeral rites, and you know they need to, but but they refuse to go because they they're, they're saying you know it's not it's not it's not Christian, and a lot of people don't understand why. I don't understand why. Um, so let's just um, uh, can you just break down for me the tradition of last funeral rites and why we should not do it. What I see about uh, funeral rites, there are some activities which are done and they are not godly. Uh, for example, that night before the real day, they call upon the spirits of their sisters. If you have ever produced twins, also they do th those rituals so that on the morning, then they do the funeral rites. So because of that, that's why it is not good for the Christian to participate. However, if it's your dad, it is very important your dad to know your faith. For example, my dad, I had to tell him that for me, I'm born again. Uh, if there's any, whatever you, you die, we can organize the service, we put on the, on the hair, and that's all. And my father was convinced, and uh, we, we organized it when he, when he died. And there's no problem, and it became a culture of the, the family now. So they are no longer calling those spirits now. Mm. And this has brought peace within our family, because we don't go in those kind of rituals. And uh, I have only one incident, there's a brother in our church, he went for a uh, funeral for, for his father, and the, the man came back when he could not talk and speak. And he died when he could not speak and, uh, and, and talk. And this is uh, because of the final rites. They called upon the spirits. Maybe the spirit took over his life. So that's why I, I don't believe in, that, in such. So However, so if it is your dad and you, uh, for them, your family members are believing that, what you can do is to contact your church if you can take the, the band and have the service there, uh, maybe all that night they take a service, and then the morning they put on the hair, they, they get the hair, and then you can uh, call it a day. Okay. Mm. Uh, 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 Bishop Town, do you have anything to add to that? Well, um, my brother has already spoken everything almost, but what I'm saying is that, like, coming from southern Sudan, uh, what I'm saying is that final, last final rites actually our last respect to the late which doesn't add anything to the late mm -hmm. but it is an encouragement to the living because whatever we do after the dead is an encouragement what do we preach the gospel is to encourage those who are living and to have a hope that even if when they die they still they are still loved but as a christian i will not say i will totally discourage uh, last funeral rites but it depends on how you do it if there are other traditions 
worship of other spirits mm. are involved, then let's forget about it. Mm. Yeah. But if I am a Christian, I have a church, I have a pastor, I organize with my church. Um, um, we are organizing the last funeral rite of my father or my grandfather. Let's come together. Let's thank the Lord that I had a man who raised me up, a man who cared for me, a man who loved me, a man who had served in this world. Now he's no more there. Today, I just wanted to say, we want to thank God that he has gone home to the Father to be with him. So let us organize it. There's the message preached. Food is organized, mm -hmm. whatever we eat, and we thank the Lord for it, and we disperse. Without those other things that we do at the corners, uh, those rituals that we perform, you know. I mean to say, last funeral rites depends on what you do mm -hmm. during the last funeral rite. Mm. If what you do is evil, then mm -hmm. I, as a Christian, mm -hmm. will not support it. Okay. Yeah. If, if you have, you know, any questions, any queries, uh, any things to add to the discussion, of course, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, phone uh, lines are on your screen. Or you can also get in touch uh, with us on Facebook and on Twitter, and I will be able to, you know, respond uh, to your messages and just, uh, you know, take your comments or questions. And uh, you can also get into our, our Twitter handle is ntv underscore gxp. I beg your pardon. Our Facebook address is ntv uh, gxp. A couple of more, a couple more of your messages uh, here. Uh, Momo. You say big no our cultures most of the time consult which doctors to help instead of consulting God. Um <coughs> and uh there's there's Ivan here who is saying, I really wonder why the church refused to wed a couple which wanted holy marriage just because their names belong to the same clan, much as they are not blood relatives. I think the church failed the couple uh to be good Christians because I guess now they are cohabiting. Um and 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 and, and there's, there's there's that one now um this situation. Um, the church seemed to be, apparently t the church failed to wed two people from the same clan, uh, from whose names, the person says their names belong to the same clan. I, I know you, you don't get married to someone mm -hmm. from your clan. Mm -hmm. um, and now things, things like that, I mean, should they also go? Um, I don't think that is right, to marry from the same clan. For mm -hmm. example, if uh, I'm coming from a um, clan, then I marry from the same clan. I don't think it's not right because you are coming from the same person. Though may be many, but we are coming from the same root. Okay. So if you marry, you are marrying your sister. Mm. It wouldn't be right. Ah. Unless if let me say you go, for example, in Kenya, they use the name Nyanzi. If it's coming from Kenya, among the Bachukuyu and called Nyanzi, then there's no problem marrying a, a Ugandan who's calling mm. Nanyanzi. Yeah. yeah. Because that one, Chukuyu, they have a different meaning. But if they're coming from the same clan, no. Mm. Okay, right. we have a call on the line. Hello? 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 Uh, your name and where you're calling from? Yes? Your name and where you're calling from? Hello? <coughs> I seem to have lost that one. Uh, NTV, hello? Uh, your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling. You called? I'm I'm calling from Yes, your question or comments? Uh, there seems to be a uh, problem with, with, with the network. Hello? Uh, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, seem, seem to have. I uh, have lost them there. So are there, like, uh, again, um, because because a lot of us don't understand the background of a lot of these cultures, are uh, just like, you know, examples from, from to just sort of give Christians an idea of what and what cannot, like what we, sh what we should keep and what we shouldn't. Because our cultures, um, a lot of us haven't been brought up in places where we are strong on culture. Mm. Yeah. Um, we have a dot-com generation. We all want to be bill gates and you know the guy from facebook and you know those things and i want to be very white and watch white movies and we're not very cultured people you know so to speak a lot of us um is it possible to just cite a couple of examples of things that christians should and and, and shouldn't do from from your cultures um for example you know what culture what what things did you give up uh, when you became a christian what what kind what things don't you do from your culture as i'm gonna uh i don't uh, participate in uh, funeral rights Unless it is done in the church way. Yes. If I produce twins, we don't go those uh, rituals. We just take the children in the church to be baptized or to be dedicated. And um, 
something which is connected with the worshiping. That's what I don't participate. For example, if they call all the members of the family to come and uh, whatever to, uh, to do those rituals with the family, I don't participate. But if it is uh, for the f uh, uh, fellowship, they call all the members of the family, fellowship, knowing each other, that one is no problem. But anything diverting from the Bible, I don't participate. Okay. Uh, Pastor, uh, sorry, uh, Bishop. Yeah, I mean to say, really, I don't want to say some kind of a thing that is happening before Christianity is evil. Until when I cross check with the word of God mm. and yes. I find that it doesn't agree. Yes. Anything that is contradicting the word of God, definitely that's something that we need to keep away from. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to encourage people to keep away from. Because we don't want to compromise the word of God because of our culture. Yeah. Because I strongly believe that our cultures needs uh, to be purified. Our cultures need to be transformed with the word of God. So we need to keep our cultures. You know, like for example in the church, <coughs> it's very beautiful the way Africans worship. Yes. Our drums had been there before we knew Christianity. Yes. Mm. But now yeah. what, what our drums are doing in the church is so beautiful. Mm. Even uh, some Muzungus love to come to our churches mm. and dance with us and say, oh wow, back home I don't dance with this kind of drums, you mm. know. It's so beautiful. And today we, 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 we are actually adapting another culture whereby, you know, we, we want to sing like, you know, British, we want to sing mm. like Europeans, we want mm. to sing like Americans in our church. That's their culture. If you, if you go deeper even to their secular music, it's the same thing. Mm. So their secular music is transformed to be a music in Christ now in the church. Mm -hmm. So the same like, I play my, my, my drums, my African drums, mm -hmm. but I'm praising Jesus mm -hmm. instead of worshiping my ancestors. So I mean to say, we need just to use the Bible as the basis of mm -hmm. checking ourselves. It is our mirror. Mm -hmm. That if I say something that is contrary to the Bible, I'm in agreement that we need, we need not to get associated. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll be back talking about a, a bit more about this. Feel free to call us, uh, get in touch with us on Facebook or on Twitter. Our Facebook address is ntvjxp. Our Twitter handle is ntv underscore jxp. Good morning. You're watching NTV GXP, having a fabulous time on the show. I hope you're enjoying the music that DJ Twenjix was playing for you. And thank you very much for getting in touch with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Our Facebook address is NTV GXP. Our Twitter handle is NTV underscore GXP. Of course, you can feel free to call us. Our number is on your screen uh, right about now. Uh, so feel free to give us a call and just let us know what your thoughts are. We're talking about Christianity and tradition. Um... Is there a place where these two can coexist or should we just uh, entirely, uh, you know, throw them out and disconnect and say, you know, I've become a Christian. So all these Buganda, Wasoga, Bachiga things, you know, I, I really don't want to know and, and, and just move on. And of course, you can, you can call us up and let us know what your views on that are. But, you know, before we went, uh, during the break, we were, we were talking about, um, I, was I, was, I was talking about, you know, we, we have talked about our cultures here. But then there are the cultures that came with Christianity when yes, it came right. to this country. And um, do we need to discern those also as we are discerning our cultures and saying, <coughs> you know, this is, this is, this should stay and this shouldn't. Do we need to discern um, those cultures also? Yeah, I need, we, need, we need to separate the gospel from the culture because the gospel came from a certain culture for example, from the Romans, there are some cultures of the Romans, there are some cultures of the Jews, so we have to separate the gospel from the Jews. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gospel is a cross culture. It goes to every culture. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Mujisu, I don't need to change his culture, but tell him about salvation and to change out what is not good in his culture. And also when this people brought the gospel here, we are not supposed to change our culture because of them. We are supposed to change what is against the biblical teaching. And also, for us not to accept their culture because of the gospel. However, we can pick what is good from their culture and we can take it, but not to take it as a, a gospel. Uh, well, I basically agree with my brother that um, Christianity is uh, not really for a specific culture. It goes through all cultures. And I mean to say, a culture 
is a way of doing things for quite a long time. So we need to only take the evil elements of our culture, things in our culture that we know is, it doesn't agree with the word of God. We need to remove them. But we don't have to have a specific culture to say, unless you do things this way, mm. then you are spiritual right. But because is, is, isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that what, what I don't know if the, if the word is doctrine, but you see every, every, mm. every, every denomination has a way yeah, they do certain things. Yeah, isn't, isn't that what doctrine brings, brings, brings to the church as is? Actually, the, what we call a doctrine is the Bible, is the word yeah. of God. There is no doctrine that, that is a genuine doctrine mm. that creates certain things that has no biblical support. Mm. There are people, of course, who have added into their beliefs yeah. certain things that you don't find them in the Bible. I don't, I don't agree with them. Mm. Because when I talk of a doctrine, every doctrine has to be based on the Bible, the Bible. and has to be defended by the word of God. No. Sure. So, so, and, and I'm wondering about the scenario, the, the scenario I was talking about, uh, which I'll get to in just a bit. But first, let's take a couple of calls. Hello, mm. hello, 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 hello. Um. I think there's a problem with our lines. Please keep trying to call. We'll, we'll, we'll try and, 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 and fix that as soon as possible. Um, there's this scenario talking about the final people getting saved and mm -hmm. um, they're in, say, a Catholic faith. And yes. uh, Catholic faith is only the most contention right now because um, you find, you know, they have the rosary and they have Hail Mary and they, they have all, the, all these things that come with being a Catholic. Someone gets saved and they're wondering, okay, should I, you know, leave that faith and, you know, go or should I? I mean, what? Because because that those 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 are are cultural things, I might say, you know, because you don't find anything about the rosary or you don't find those things in the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah, so those are cultural things. So what does how does someone go about that? You know, when 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 they become a Christian, I mean, do they need to leave? Can they can they be? Uh, can can you be you know Christian in the fact that you know you gave your life to you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, but you are still, you know. I think uh, the Bible is a mirror. We check out what the Catholic are doing, and what the Bible is saying. If what they are doing is contrary to the Bible, then you should leave. If they are not contrary to the Bible, then can stay. For example, if they are believing some of the spirits and what and what. And we see the Bible is not in agreement. Can say, ah, ah, you cannot be in, in both this way and that end. But if the same way, there is no problem. One can continue being a Catholic as a safety. For example, Rosalie, it is not among the the, the born again. Mm. We don't use that one. Um, honoring, um, is there anything wrong with it, Mary? The history. When you it's not a history. The Rosalie was brought by Peter. Peter was training people how to, to pray, to cram prayers. And that's why you're using that one. As you can use the sticks to teach a younger child how to count. But now it was adapted in the church up to now. So there's nothing wrong with eh? it. Because you find a lot of... Because I, 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 like these are things of contention mm. that you find a lot of Christians... Uh, I mean, spending a lot of time arguing about. And it's, it's, I, I didn't know about the history of the rosary. Mm. I'm just saying that now, which is, which is, mm. which is interesting. There's no, that, that means it's just, there's nothing mm. wrong with the rosary. It's just, it's just um, a yeah, okay. What we see, the mind of a person is not there. You are not speaking your own words. That is the problem. But you are just reciting. Isn't that the same as saying the Lord's so Prayer? So there is no power in that. <laughs> eh? Isn't that the same as saying the Lord's <laughs> Prayer? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just reciting. Just like if I go to my father uh, and I have a letter, I'm, I'm just reading. No, but that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm asking because yeah. because we, we say and, and I'll get back because mm. now I'm going to this calls. <laughs> hello, NTV. Hello. Hello. Uh, your name uh, and where you're calling from? Hello, this is Wanyenda Martin. Yes, Martin. Your question or comment? Uh, I'm Wanyenda Martin. Yes, Martin. We can hear you loud and clear. Question or comment? Actually, my view today. Yes. And now I was thinking mm. uh, there is no big difference between uh, the religion, uh, our tradition, mm. because if you to look, they all aim at good people in the society. Mm. But the only 
only view I can give about it is eliminating part of the cultural beliefs. Mm. Okay, people who go to shrine to us, which was a tradition long time. Mm. But now if we had to follow our Christianity religion, mm. I would be on the view that we should all stick to our religions. Mm. And since we all follow the same God, mm. because there's no difference in that. Mm. So that's what I believe since all the religions and uh, traditions mm. aim at bringing up people in the right way. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, NTV, hello. Yes, hello. Uh, your name and where you're calling from? I am uh, Male. Yes, Male. Your question or comments? Um, question and comments. Hmm. Uh, and then, like, for me, at uh, we seem to have we seem to have lost him. Uh, there, NTV, hello. Hello. Uh, who are we talking to? Your this is Fred. This is Fred. Yes, Fred. Where are you calling from? Yeah, I am calling from Lubaga. How is Lubaga this morning? Yeah, Lubaga is good. Your question or comment, Fred? Well, I want to comment on the Christian as African and Zimbabwe. Yes. What you need to know is that uh, before the Christian uh, the African understood God and their religion was the high. Mm. We see a lot of books being introduced within us by the coming of Christianity. Mm. As one of our commenting about the Lord's Day. I beg your pardon? I'm, I'm saying yes. there is power in the Lord's Day because this is a link to the Blessed Virgin Mary mm. that we as the followers play through Mother Mary. Mm. Uh, hello, I think we seem to have lost him there. Uh, NTV, hello? Hello? Uh, we seem to be uh, losing him. But, but really quickly, you are, you are, I, was, I, was, I was asking a question. Um, mm. you, you are saying the problem with the rosary is that you're not praying from the heart. And I was just asking you, isn't that the same as reciting the Lord's Prayer mm. or the Apostles' Creed or mm. you know, any, any of the other things? Yeah, what I see in that one, your heart is not there. You just go through a system, but your heart is not powered before the Father. But if I pray directly to, to my God, I pour my heart and my desires before God than reciting a prayer. But so you, you recite the Lord's Prayer. Mm. But that is uh, just in the memory, but it is not the prayer of a uh, system that I have to pray with that one only. You can just, just, just say that you pray this just to guide people how to pray. For example, in the Lord prayer there is forgiveness, there is uh, commitment, uh, there is uh, worshipping. So you would just even say, pray like this. Bishop, um, what, what are your thoughts on, on the different norms and things that come from, that, that Christianity has come you know, with? Well, in the first place, I don't want to discuss much about um, the rosary or the Catholics do how they do it. Mm. Because always that is the area where conflicts <coughs> come from. Uh, so and so is against my church, is yeah. against my belief. Yeah. The fact remains that the fact that I am not a Catholic mm. is because I don't agree. That's enough. And the reason that uh, your first question was when you are a Catholic and you are born again, would you continue to stay there or quit? Mm. One thing is that the fact that you are there and you are not born again is alone by itself a problem. Yes. Something must be wrong. Uh, you, cannot, you cannot get born again and be left in the same place which was not able to make you see the yes. message of being born again. Mm. That is the fact that you have to quit. Yes. It is just the same like you know, pulling something out of the mud, clean it up and, and dip it back. back. The fact that you are there in the mud is mud, and I want <coughs> you out of the mud. If I get you out of the mud, I don't want to put you back again. I want you to be somewhere else. Yes. So that you don't get yourself that again. Mm. So, uh, to me, like for example in my church, 
the basis of qualification to become a member, you must be born again. Yes. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. So it is a must. So any member who becomes a member of my fellowship must be born again. And if anybody is in my fellowship, and I want to hear again that he has been in my fellowship for all these years, I believe he's born again, and again I hear he has gone somewhere and has become born again, then he should remain where he has gone to. Which means something has been wrong here that maybe I wasn't giving him the right thing. And he went there and he got born again. So when, when a person is born again, a person is in a church, a person is in a system, in a religious system, and again he became born again. And you say, well, you are born again, you can remain That's there. Yeah. The fact that he's not born again because those people doesn't have the message of being born again. If they had the message, you would have been born again. So, I mean, that is the difference uh, uh, that I can say, basically say. But um, why they do the rosary, why do you do those, all those? I mean, anything that you cannot support it biblically, I don't, I don't, I don't basically agree with it. And then uh, secondly, like for example, praying to Mother Mary and let Mother Mary pray to Jesus and Jesus. I mean to say, prayer is talking to God. Why should I have to go through someone else in order to ask God in the name of Jesus? So those are some of the things, but I don't want to debate so much on mm -hmm. that because yeah, I don't want yeah. to create some kind of, you know, no, Catholic yes. say, oh, no, no, they no, have no, offended our faith no, no, no. because of this. I, I, I think what, what, what at, at, at the end of the day, what I'd like to talk about is not even religion, yeah. it's salvation. Yes. Salvation. yes. Exactly. Because which, 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 which is open, open to us all. But let's oh. take a couple mm -hmm. of callers. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Uh, hi, how are you? Your name and where you're calling from? I beg your pardon? I'm Paul Yes. How uh, are your question or comments? Uh, I want to How Okay, you're 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 breaking up. Your network seems to be really bad. I can hardly hear you. Hello. Hello? Hello. Uh, uh good morning good morning. Who are we talking to? Good morning. Uh, your name is <coughs> Gerald calling from Peter. Yes, Gerald, your comment or question. Yeah, um, I wanted to say that uh, the thing of uh, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer and then the Rosary. Mm. Um, you find that the Lord's Prayer is in the Bible. Mm. And when you look at uh, all of the Catholic Prayer and uh, Going through the Rosary and what? It's not anywhere in the Bible. It's not anywhere in the Bible, and you don't see it. And so, and uh, these people are coming. The Rosary are coming straight from Jesus, whom we believe, and is, and you know, is the only way, truth, and and right. Mm. So if anything apart from that, I don't think uh, I would agree with it. So uh, I would do say that I think the Rosary has no problem mm. because it is biblical. Mm. Yeah, and you find that the rosary is not anywhere in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would say. Well, thank you very much. Uh, NTV, good morning. Hello? Hello. Uh, your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling Bennett. I'm calling from Udo. Yes, Bennett. Yes. Yes. Can you can you please speak up? I can hardly hear you. Yes. Thank you very much. Let's just take one more caller. Hello? 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 Hello, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, Eric. I beg your pardon? I'm Eric. Yes, Eric. Your question or comments? <laughs> Seem to have lost in there. But, but bef before, because we're, we're, we're beginning to, to run out of time. And, you know, a lot of times, because, um, again, we're talking off, off air and, uh, and we're talking about how a lot of times, because um, you're saying we should separate Christianity 
from cultures. Yeah, a lot of times when you're reading the Bible, there is the it's it's it, it, it's it's it was written in the context of Jewish culture, and I mean you 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 both have you know gone to theology school and you understand you know how to study the Bible and things like that. How do we separate in 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 study terms? I mean, do we need to separate as we study the Bible? Um, the, the 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 context in which it was written is you know because again we're talking about because because talking about I mean the culture in which you know those things were written is there a need to separate that how do we study that and uh, so how do we effectively get the point of what's being said you know other than is is is, is do you have any tips on how to effectively study and and you know I think um, when you read the Old Testament New Testament. Mm. You see that uh, the New Testament is not more, more talking about the culture, it's about salvation. Most of the culture you find in the, the Old Testament, when it's uh, addressed to the Levites, the Jews, but the New Testament is very clear about salvation, that salvation is for everybody, whether a Jew mm. or is a Gentile. Well, as in the Old Testament, this for, for them, they thought that God was only for, for them, mm. but the New Testament is for all people. Mm. So the coming of Jesus Christ was for all people created by God, uh, despite of their culture. So uh, when you read the Old Testament and New Testament, you can separate what is culture and what is salvation. Because you, what is not repeated in the New Testament means that is more for the culture of okay. the Jews. Uh, mm. And just, um, well, I mean, um, as I said, I keep on saying it again, is that we have to separate culture with the really message of salvation. Because salvation is for all cultures. All cultures are good minus the evil yes. practices in them. Yes. All cultures are good minus the evil practices in them. But salvation is actually salvation to anybody, to everybody, okay. regardless of their cultures. So like, for example, I sometimes in my church I say to people, I said, I cannot go to the Bible and begin opening and I started preaching about homosexual to my congregation mm. that never practice that in their culture. Mm. You know, If I open the Bible and I begin reading that passage where Paul tackled the homosexual, I, I believe that all my, my audience say, what is happening? What is he preaching? They will all be looking at each other because this doesn't happen in basically in our culture it's not there. Mm. So why should I have to do it? Is it because it is is it because it's written in the Bible? No. I have to preach it because I know that it meets the, the need of the people. And if homosexual is not a problem among my people, there's no need to read that passage of homosexual. Mm. So Paul was talking to a specific group of people, specific kind of a culture that he was tackling. Like for example, I talk of women. Some people stick there and say, you know, Paul said, women should learn in silence. I always tell them, I said, you need to be careful who, yeah, whom he was addressing and what specific problem he was addressing. Don't generalize it upon women. Because it's the same Paul who said, these women who worked hard alongside me in spreading the good news. These women who worked hard alongside me. S you know, it means these women we worked together in spreading the good news. That's mm -hmm. why in my church I believe in the ordination of women. Mm -hmm. I believe with the women ministers they have to minister. Yes. So uh, the, the fact remains that there is a culture even in the Bible <coughs> that we need to understand that salvation is for all cultures and all cultures are good minus evil practices among them. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Basoga culture, the Muganda culture, the Kakwa culture, whichever culture comes around, the Lango, the Acholi culture, they're all good as long as we take away that element of worship of Evil spirits, yeah. ancestral worships, and all these kind of evil things, evil practices, which of course clearly the Bible can speak to us about them. You know, you can prove them. The Bible is our mirror, as my brother said earlier. Anything that we do, we need to put it on the Bible. If the Bible doesn't support it, forget about it. So I mean to say, uh, our cultures, we need to keep them. Uh, today, one thing is the music today in our, in our churches is no longer our. It's not ours. It's not ours. Mm. You know? You find one person, I mean, a person singing for one hour, just two words. Mm. And I keep there listening to the beat and <laughs> everything is just two words. That's not our culture. Mm. You know, in our culture, when I sing, I'm passing a message. Yes. 
What message are you passing in two words? You know. And, and then it is being sung in our church. So that is not our culture. That, I mean, we need, to, we need to watch and see. That, to me, um, a person singing is equal like me standing on the pulpit. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he's, said, he's, he's preaching to me. He's, he's giving me a message. But then what message are you giving me by wasting all my time? I hear all this music beat with all the two words being repeated <laughs> all the time. And the kind of dance is not the dance normally mm. that is among our culture. Mm. Yeah. And then, and then to tell you one thing I read on Facebook, some of the things even that, even, even like dressing. You know our guys like to dress, mm. the clothes almost like falling. Yes. Mm. And then one guy on Facebook said that that's actually originated from the U.S. prisons. You know, because they, they had been many long time in prison and they, they, want, they, don't, they don't meet women and all that. Mm. So men goes with men. Mm. And some of the guys, if they are ready for that kind of uh, meeting, mm. you know, they, they express it by, by wearing their, their, their <laughs> clothes <laughs> like, <Yeah>. like falling. <laughs> and, mm. and, and today, we, we see it like a fashion, fashion you know. Yeah. If you dig deeper into where it originated, mm. you will say, no, I don't want to dress like yes, that. Yes, of course. You see? So, I mean, to say, so cultures are cultures. The, our cultures are all good. But we only need to know that we need to take the evil practices out of our cultures. If we do that, then it's okay. Yeah. Right, okay, we have, we have to wrap this up. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Taban, uh, uh, Bishop Taban. Yes, I'm a pastor, uh, of yes. course. <laughs> yes, I'm a Bishop. pastor. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to address you by proper yeah. title. Yeah. And, 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 and Reverend Anyazi mm -hmm. for coming through. Would you like just you know, pray for us before we close? Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend, if you, if, you will, if you will pray for us before we close. And, and you know. Mm. Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come for the grace and your mercy. Mm. We thank you for this country you gave us, Uganda. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it is not by man or by power, it is for your grace. Mm. We thank you for the people in Uganda. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you for the church leaders, what they have done for this country. Mm. And Heavenly Father, we put this nation before you. May let your grace, your mercy, and your protection be upon this country. Lord, may lead our leaders to decide what is right and leave out what is wrong. May let your glory also cover the church leaders to give them wisdom and understanding to deal with all circumstances that covering our, our nation. And in front of Jesus, we put this station and TV before you. Mm. Bless the leaders, bless the organizers. Let your blessing be upon them, my Father. May you let your protection be upon them. Lord, we worship you and we will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and Amen. trust. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for watching the show uh, today. Uh, of course, next Sunday, the 1st of December, uh, it's going to be an absolutely exciting show, so make sure you tune in. But, you know, as you go through your week, uh, please learn your culture. You know, if, if you are more, yeah, you know, minus, as they say, minus the things that, you know, are against what the Bible says. It helps for us to understand uh, what our cultures are, especially as Christians, because they have some things they bring to the table. I mean, learn how to kneel, learn how to, like those simple yeah. little uh, things, they do help. Thank you very much for tuning in to NTV GXP. Keep following us on our Twitter and our Facebook. Our Twitter handle is NTV underscore GXP. Our Facebook address is NTV GXP. We'll leave you with Twonjex on the ones and twos, playing you some absolutely fabulous music. Bye-bye.